Okay, in the previous video, we looked at um, how we can measure the enzyme, the activity of the enzyme amylase, which I'll put that there. Amylase, of course, is the enzyme which digests starch, a polysaccharide here, into maltose, which is a disaccharide. It doesn't break it down into glucose quite, into, it breaks into blocks of two. Okay, and in the previous experiment, we measured how fast the enzyme was working by how quickly starch disappeared so we used the fact that starch goes blue black in iodine okay and so the better way of doing it might be able to measure the appearance of maltose so how much of this is made and we, we discussed ways of measuring that and uh, maltose is a reducing sugar and so thought could we use benedict's test to to see how much maltose is made Unfortunately, Benedict's test is very good at telling you if you've got some maltose there, yes or no, but it's not very good at enabling you to measure how much maltose you get. Um, you get a red precipitate, whether you've got a bit of maltose, whether you've got a lot of maltose, and it's not doesn't tell you how much. So there is a, a, a way in which you can quantify the amount of maltose, and it's again relies on the fact that it's reducing sugar. And we use this chemical here called DNS, dinitrosalicylic acid. It's very similar to aspirin, actually, except it's got these two nitro groups on here uh, on a, car a six carbon ring with double bonds in it called a benzene ring. And don't worry about the structure because it's not important. OK, now, if you've got a reducing sugar, if you've got a reducing sugar like maltose present. If you add maltose to it, what it does is it uh, changes that NO2 group to an H2 and NH2. So it swaps the oxygens for, for hydrogens, it reduces it. Okay, and that's quite useful because this stuff, the, the DNS, that is colorless. And this is a red solution. Now that's better than the Benedict's test because the Benedict's test, you've got a red precipitate. Um, this uh, this one you get a red solution so you can tell how much maltose you've got there by how deep the red color is okay so for example if you didn't have very much maltose at all you'd see something like that very pale pink if you had plenty of maltose there you would get a lot of this uh, product it would be a really deep red color okay so you could tell by looking at it now you can actually measure that with a machine called a colorimeter okay uh, which you may or may have not used okay so here we're going to use color a colorimeter measures color so color imagery is measure, using a colorimeter to measure color okay so what basically you do you get your tube and you get a light there's a little light source here there's a light bulb producing white light you get a filter uh, and that just gives you one wavelength, of one, one color of light going through. And here's your solution with the red stuff in it. And the light passes through the solution and you, you have a detector there. Now, if the light is, if it's a very strong um, red color, you won't get much light going to the detector because the, the solution is blocking it out. It is very dilute and most of the light will reach the detector. Now a colorimeter actually looks, it, look, it looks like a balance, about the same size little, not very big, fits on a desktop. Okay, and you have a little digital readout here, 0.00. You'll have a little hole in the middle of it, a little square hole. Uh, and you put your tube into this little square hole. You get a little special little square tube. The tube goes in there and all hidden away inside there. You've got, you, know, you can't see it, but you've got your, there's your light source there and the light goes across and you've got your detector there. And when you want to get a reading, there's just a little button and you press the button and then you get the reading on the display and that gives you an absorbance. Um, if you get an absorbance of zero, it means there's no, you've got no red color. If you get an absorbance of two, is about the biggest absorbance you can get, that would be a very strong red color. So you can measure how much color you've got, and that is going to be proportional to how much um, maltose you had. 
because you need maltose to make this red stuff. Okay, so absorbance is basically proportional to the amount of maltose you've got. So how do we do this experiment then? Right, so it's pretty similar to the last one. We are going to get, first of all, we will get a water bath. We're going to measure the change in temperature. Okay, so there's our water bath. So we're going to start off at 30 degrees C. We're going to hold, do a load of, whole load of different temperatures. Um, we would get our, um, right, you get your, you get two tubes, first of all. You put in there, you put your amylase in one and you put your starch in the other one. Let them get up to temperature Then you mix the tubes. So here we've got our mixture now of starch and amylase. And you wait exactly five minutes every time. So you give the enzyme five minutes to digest the amylase because we want to see how much maltose we get produced in five minutes. The more maltose we get, the more active the enzyme is. So we don't obviously want to do one two minutes and one seven minutes and stuff like that because it's the same. Keep keep that constant. Uh, we're changing. We're only changing the temperature. So we want to keep the concentration of starch the same every time. This concentration of amylose every time amylase every time we want to keep the ph the same so we would use a buffer solution probably a ph7 um, we do that every single time now when five minutes is up what you would do is you would get your tube and you would get another tube here and you've got a solution of your uh, dns that's the stuff that's going to change color when you add maltose to it you get this tube, right? The DNS, and that's quite important here. This is in um, solution of pH 12. This is quite an alkaline solution, which is good. The reaction between the DNS and the maltose works better at pH 12. And the other good thing about having a pH 12, of course, is when you put the mixture in there, what's it going to do to the enzyme? That is going to stop all enzyme activity. So it's not, you know, it would be a problem if. If, it, if the if the starch carried on being digested by the amylase five minutes after you know you're taking it out of the water bath and when you're measuring the thing but this stops the reaction dead so you know any maltose that's been made has been made in the five minutes when it was in there and not afterwards right you're going to leave that a few minutes you just leave it it's almost instantaneous the reaction but you maybe leave it a minute and what will happen is it will go red if there's any maltose it will go red and then what you do with this tube you put it in the colorimeter and you measure the absorbance okay the stronger the absorbance means the more maltose you've got in there in the first place that, that's been made by the enzyme so let's have a look at this set of results we've got some results down here right well, I haven't got the results. I'll write them in. Okay, so let's write a set of results in there. What we're going to get is, let's say, temperature. Sorry. That's right. Temperature and absorbance. And we're going to do 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40 we'll do so the absorbance say so there it's not much 0.2 we haven't made much maltose at 10 degrees c it's gone up to 0.6 then it's gone up more 0.8 20 going the enzymes working better more maltose and more 25 30 more still 35 1.2 40 even more and then after 40 the absorbance so will start going down Okay, because, okay, now this absorbance is proportional to the amount of maltose that you've made, okay? And we can actually work out the amount of maltose. So same we're gonna have here, micrograms 
of maltose made per centimeter cubed. All right, now how are we gonna how are we gonna do that? So well we can see, let's just first of all look at the results. This would appear to be the optimum temperature, wouldn't it? 40 degrees C, because you've got the biggest absorbance there, 1.3. And that's the enzyme, you, you've got the biggest absorbance because you've made the most maltose. So you've got the darkest red color, and we measure that with a calorimeter. Once you get past 40, you don't get as much uh, maltose produced because the enzyme has been denatured, we'd expect. At lower temperatures, enzymes, like 10, enzymes don't work terribly well. So you're gonna get a lower, a lower value there. Right, we need to now turn that absorbance into this, okay? Micrograms of maltose per centimeter cube. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, what we do is we've gotta make a, do a calibration of the colorimeter. Right, so you can see there, what I've got is I've got here a seven different test tubes with different concentrations of uh, maltose that has been reacted with the DNS to make the red color. Okay, so I started off, I made this solution up here. I've got 70 micrograms per centimeter cubed of maltose, made that, that solution as accurately as I could. And we've added a certain volume of DNS to it. What would happen, that would react with the maltose and go, and it would go red. Okay, then what I've done is I transferred directly into that tube, say, say I put seven centimeters cubed of that solution to this one. But to this one, what I've added here it is, now this is only 60 micrograms centimeters cubed, so I've added six centimeters cubed of that solution, and I've added plus one centimeter cubed of H2O. So that's gonna dilute it a bit. This one here, you can probably see I've added five of the, the red solution and two of water. This one, four and three, and so on, until this one I just added pure water just seven centimeters cube of water so i've made all those solutions and i put them into my color, color um, into the colorimeter and i measure the absorbance okay and what i would get is the absorbance would go up as it got more strong so i could put down or well, to put on the scale here i'd want 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 micrograms of uh, that's 50 30 and 10 Right, I'm not going to, just right, you're going to get something like this, okay? So you plot a line of best fit, okay? There's a line of best fit. Now, how do we find out the absorbance of our tubes? Right, how do we find out how much, how much, um, how much, um, how many micrograms of maltose we've got in this tube? Right, let's have a look at this one here. Let's say at 25 degrees C, we've got an absorbance of one. So what do we do? We go on our calibration curve, absorbance of one, put that line there, draw the line down there. That's 30, according to that little chart there, that's 30 micrograms of maltose. So I would put 30 micrograms of maltose there. Same, do it for all of these and you've got a value. Okay, so that's how much maltose you made. Then you would do a final column in this table if you wanted to you would want to say the enzyme activity. Now, what's the enzyme doing? The enzyme is making maltose. Uh, and don't forget, we incubated the enzyme with them for, I think we did it with five minutes. So this one here, the one at 30, that has made 30 micrograms in five minutes. So what's the enzyme activity? 30 divided by five, that's six. And the units would be micrograms per centimeter cubed per minute so that would give us a, an actual you know number with a unit we could work out how many micrograms of maltose the enzyme is making at all of these different temperatures here okay so that would be a much more quantitative way of doing it um, it would be difficult to set up you would have to again just like the other experiment you'd have to be careful you have to make sure you'd have to do a preliminary experiment if you added if you added too much amylase, then you'd be making the, um, the maltose too fast and the, all the solutions would just go very red and you wouldn't be able to tell you something. So you'd have to make sure your amylase was the right, uh, the starch was the right concentration, the amylase was the right concentration, sorry.
if you didn't have enough starch, then maybe all the starch would get digested, even at these lower ones here. So then you wouldn't, even at 20 degrees C, all of the starch digested. So it wouldn't matter if you left it you know, at a higher temperature, you wouldn't get any more. So they, they'd all look the same amount of red. So you would have to mess about with the concentration, do a few preliminary experiments um, to make it work. But the important thing when you did it is you'd have to keep a load of things the same, which would be concentration of starch, concentration of amylase, the pH, um, the volume of DNS that we've added, all of those sorts of things, you would have to keep the same.